Hey, welcome back. This is our first look at the fully assembled Carrera Digital 132 Spirit of Speed slot car racing set. And I want to put this up now before I perform a formal review because it's it's way too soon to do a formal review. I just got this up and operational. Is because um, all the other reviews for this particular set uh, don't showcase th what it looks like straight out of the box. Uh, all the other reviewers have gone ahead and added additional track length as well as uh, additional peripherals like a pit lane and stuff. So this is what the entire set looks like out of the box fully assembled, okay? It's about uh, 26, a little over 26 feet of track. I think that's 8 meters. It's a pretty large set. It's not the largest one they sell. This set does come with three slot cars, however. And this layout is featured in several different Carrera Digital 132 sets. So, uh, just to give you an idea of the floor space this requires, it's about a, a 10 and a half foot by 5 foot footprint. Okay? This monopolizes our studio down here when fully assembled. Uh, it does have an overpass with some uh, support columns beneath it that are working just fine, but I'm probably going to redesign this layout to either an oval or something that's perfectly flat rather than the overpass. It's cool, but that's going to be a huge pain in the ass to set up every Friday night, okay? Because my plan is to keep this out over the weekend and play with it, then put, pack it up on Sunday night and go about my business throughout the week because there's no way I can just keep this in the floor all the time. Uh, but that is what it looks like, okay? And uh, the uh, Carrera track is indeed robust, uh, Probably much more so than scale extric track. Um, it was kind of difficult to assemble because I'd never assembled a slot car track before in my entire life. I like to think that the next time I put it together, it won't take so long. But just to let you know, and I'm not ashamed to admit this at all, I did take a half hour break for supper. But all in all, uh, this took around two and a half hours counting or discounting the time I took to eat to put this together. But I was being very very careful with this because uh, uh, these sets are not inexpensive. The retail price on this will blow your mind, and we'll talk about that. But I got this at a discounted price because it was a secondhand used one time, in fact, on Christmas morning. And uh, it, it, it runs just fine, chappies, and we'll have a look at that. But I paid a, a much, much, much lower than retail price for this. Otherwise, I'd have never even dreamed of picking this up. I feel like the uh, price of this hobby is massively... Uh, overpriced and extortionate, but we'll talk about that. But at this point, what I want to do is maybe have a closer look at the track itself. So this is this is technology from the 1930s, as far as an electric current going through the rails when you press the uh, trigger that turns the motor inside the car, which powers the rear wheels, which makes the car move, okay? That's the way it's been since the 1930s, uh, but we've added the digital... Uh, processing unit on here that allows you to do some pretty cool stuff with this and I'll try to showcase a little of that. The track is like I said much wider than scale electric track. This is technically 124 scale track for larger cars than what we have here but uh, this also works for the 132 scale uh, slot cars. Uh, you'll know it's Carrera track because as far as I know it's the only track that has the uh, line through the middle like that, the uh, street line through the middle. Uh, but we also have barriers on the turns, and this barrier is made out of the same sort of material that an outdoor sign is made. It's very, very thick plastic. It's connected with some uh, fasteners here. It's got some end pieces, depending on whether it's suspended in the air or not. And uh, we've got some connectors beneath each of the uh, track pieces as well. You can't really see them. I can show you what they look like over here, I suppose. Uh, I'll try to keep the camera as steady as possible while I do this. So that's what a track connector piece looks like. And there's one on each side of the track. I feel like some of these, maybe you need three. And I think there is a way to put three under each track. I'd have to flip the track over to confirm that. I'm currently in no position to do that. I'll have to wait till tear down uh, to check that out. But there are some support columns underneath here, and I have to admit it's a little shoddy, and it's a little suspect under there whether that's going to, uh, you know, it could, you could easily knock those over. There's little screw holes in them. You're technically supposed to uh, pin all this down to an MDF board or a foam board 
on a gigantic table you have to build yourself because there's no such thing as a table this size. I mean, not even a boardroom conference table or a ping pong game table would accommodate this. So um, this is not ideal being in the floor for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is static discharge on the carpet here. But uh, I am on a concrete surface, so that's good news. Uh, but I just, I don't have room to put this on a table. Uh, there's no way, no how. Not even with less track would that ever happen in here. So this is how it's going to have to be. This is ages eight and up, okay? It is a toy. It is a game. And we have to keep that in perspective at all times here. There's a lot of slot car racers out there that take all this very, very seriously. And when you call this a toy, they get offended. Well, it says toy on the damn box, so check yourselves, okay? Now... Let's have some fun. We'll go ahead and turn this on and we'll uh, run some of these cars. And uh, just very quickly, we'll have a look at each model here. We've got a Corvette, uh, I believe it's a C7R. And note the little racing driver in there. That's neat. Good details on these. Uh, really cool. And we'll have a look at the underside. You can see the braids. Those have to make contact with the track in order for this thing to function. There are magnets in these slot cars. I was not aware of that until uh, further research, and this helps keep the uh, uh, cars on the rails, literally. Keeps them from flying off the rails. Now, one advantage of this type of uh, track, the Carrera track, is that the uh, rails are made of stainless steel. Now, there's people out there that say that the biggest advantage for that is it won't rust. That is incorrect. Stainless steel absolutely will rust, but it has a higher tolerance to that sort of thing than the Scalextric or other brands of, of track that don't have stainless steel uh, rail connectors there, okay? Also, the connections are really, really good on this. And the uh, plastic it's made from is a lot more robust than Scalextric track. That said, Scalextric track takes up a lot less space. I could, this would be a lot smaller if it were a Scalextric track. And that might be a good thing for me, honestly, but I'm not unhappy with with this. It does fit. It took some doing. It took some rearranging in here to make it happen. Uh, but it does fit. This particular layout does fit. I, I do kind of want to redesign that overpass and just remove that entirely. Uh, I, I would almost rather have an oval than this overpass uh, just for simplicity and in, in, in putting it together because, well, uh, I'm a little skeptical about those support columns beneath. But we looked at the Corvette here is an Aston Martin Vantage GT3. And there's the Tame Racing Driver on the inside there. Good models. Now, I may end up taking the spoilers and the antenna and the mirrors off these things. Because at high speeds, when you crash, those parts can break. So I may end up just removing those. But, yeah. That's really, really cool. Now, the whole gimmick is, see that guide piece there? That goes down in the middle of the slot. That's what holds it on there, as well as the magnets. The little uh, braid connectors touch the oh. um, the metal stainless steel rails there, receive the power, turns the motor, and they go vroom. That's this technology. That's how it works. The digital comes into all this. And finally, we have the Porsche 911 with a pink pig paint job on it, or livery, I think racers call that. And... Uh, that's really cool. Good details on these things. Now, I will say this, folks. Scalextric has neater cars, in my opinion. Uh, not necessarily racing cars, but cars like the Batmobile and James Bond's spy cars and the Bugatti Veyron. I don't think Carrera has a Veyron. I don't even know if they have a Koenigsegg or a Zonda. I think they might have a Huara, but I'm not entirely sure. They certainly have some Lamborghinis and some Ford GTs, uh, Mustangs. I'd like to pick up, but these cars are expensive. They're very expensive, especially the ones with the uh, digital chips inside them. Now, there is analog slot car racing. Analog cars will not work on this track unless you install a digital chip. Scalextric cars will work if you put in the right kind of chip. They call it the Carson chip. I henceforth call it the Johnny Carson chip because that amuses me, okay? Enough talk. Let's put... One, well, let's go ahead and turn the unit on, like so. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put my car, the Corvette, which is attuned to this controller. That's the gas, and that's the lane switching technology, and the lane switch is over on that side, okay? So when we put 
the Corvette on the track. You can notice that the lights light up, the taillights and the headlights. The lights are a little dimmer on the headlights on the Corvette. They're nice and bright on the Aston Martin and the Porsche. And I will do my best to get this around the track without uh, de-slotting and wrecking, okay? Very slowly at first. I'll try to do the lane change this time around. And we switch lanes. And that's digital technology right there. Now, it's not sophisticated as such. And I think I just crashed. I just bumped into the to the uh, Aston Martin here. In the, get the Porsche over here out of the way. Okay. Got to be careful on these curves and not go too fast. Those barriers will prevent it from flying off the track most of the time. Note, I said most of the time. Switch. Now we're back in the uh, lane we started in. I can go faster, but I'm not going to because, again, I don't want to have to go retrieve and marshal the uh, the car after it's de-slotted and drifted off the tracks there. Okay, so. And there's a lot of tricks to this that I don't know yet. There's a lot of functionality in this set, in the digital aspect of this set I'm not yet aware with. Just yet, but I, I will be soon. And we'll stop there. The little beep means you've crossed the sensors there where it says that's the lap. Okay. Now we'll take this one off and we'll, uh, this is really cool. I've programmed this uh, Aston Martin to be autonomous. When I put it on the slots, it's going to drive itself. And I had to set the speed it's going to drive at. This one's a little slower than the Porsche, but we can always go back and change that. But I'm going to put them on the track. And now he's off, and he will randomly switch lanes there on that switch. Okay? That makes for some interesting stuff. He switched again. He doesn't always do it. It's very, it's completely random as best as I can tell. I'm not doing that. Here's the controller. I'm not pushing this controller at all. This is all built into the uh, computer, the digital brain of this thing. We can do the same thing with the Porsche. We can do the same thing with the Corvette. We can have all three of these running autonomously, but... There it goes, and this one's a little faster, so this one will eventually overtake the Aston Martin. See, he's right on his tail. The Aston Martin switch lanes, and the uh, Porsche overtakes the Aston Martin. Switch lanes, Aston Martin is also going to switch lanes. And this was the appeal of the digital technology, pals. Um, so I could sit here and actually race against the computer, so to speak. And there... Now, see, he's going to lap him again because they're different speeds. You can put up to six cars at least on this track at the same time. And this thing came with three controllers, one for each car. I actually believe you might be able to boost that up to eight, including two ghost cars, which is what we've got going now. But this track wouldn't support that many cars, I don't think. I think maybe four might be. Maybe We'll just have to experiment with that. It's going to be a while before I purchase any more cars, chappies, because they are so incredibly expensive. And that's going to be a major purchase each time, unless I can find either a used or a good deal on a new one. And, uh, again, you got to be careful what you buy, because a Scalextric digital car will not work on this Carrera track. A Scalextric analog car will not work on this Carrera track unless you buy the Johnny Carson chip for it. And an analog Carrera car will not work on this track unless you buy a specific chip. It's not called a Carson chip for the Carrera digital set. So it's very confusing and there are other name brands out there as well that have proprietary chips for those cars in order to make this happen. I'm going to attempt... To race against these i'm going to wait until they've passed me before i put my car down and very quickly here we go the corvette is way behind but i'm going to try to catch up with the aston martin oops there we go and i think i can do it because i'm in a different lane than he is there we go i overtook the aston martin the porsche has has lapped me completely so i've got some catching up to do to get with with the pink pig porsche and I'm going to risk a little more speed to try to get there. If I do slot, well, that's just the way the cookie crumbles in this game. But now you can see I'm really picking up speed. It could be a... Oh, I did it! And I have overtaken and now am in the lead, I guess you could say, of this race. And you can set this to start them all up on the starting line and it counts you off. And i got to get... I'm behind the Aston Martin. 
Ah, we both. There we go. Now I can get. The, now I've lapped the Aston Martin. Porsche's hot on my heels. There we go. He stayed in the same lane as me. He switched, in other words. This is a lot of fun, Chappy. I mean, yeah, I could do all this in a video game, uh, but this is really fun. And this is a this is an experience I never had when I was a kid. So, uh, like I said, middle age, midlife crisis achievement unlocked. And I'm going to yep, ID slotted. We're gonna have to turn the uh, we turn it off so I don't get crashed into over there. So I have to go over there and put it back on the slot. Well, I think you get the picture, Chappy. Uh, again, way too soon for a formal review because I haven't even gone through half the features of this thing. You can adjust the braking. You can adjust the uh, maximum speed of these things. It's really good to probably turn them down if you're having a little kid play with this. Because a little kid can trash these cars very quickly. Now, the barriers are all good and well, but uh, I have no doubt that we could sling a car clear across the room if we really, really wanted to, despite those barriers. And again, I'm probably going to... I'm probably going to um, redesign this whole layout to make it flat. Maybe uh, it'd be cool if I could extend the uh, track that way a little bit um, and just have it snake around and do this. Um, there's plenty of room in the middle of this for me to stand, but this is not a great place to do it. I'd get wrapped up in the um, cord if I did that. And they do uh, produce digital, I'm sorry, wireless controllers for these things. I'm holding off on that. Uh, I don't need that at this time. I don't need anything else, really. But in order to take advantage of the uh, digital feature for fuel, which you can program these cars to literally run out of fuel and have to stop and, and, and uh, refuel, you need the add-on pit lane, which is over $100. So that's going to have to wait. And uh, that allows you to come off the track, refuel, then come back on the track and go about the race. Uh, there is a, a digital app that needs to communicate with this thing by way of a Bluetooth uh, adapter that goes in here. That's about 40 45 bucks. Uh, this this hobby can really nickel and dime you to death, chappies. And um, the truth is, smaller scale tracks, I found, weren't that less expensive than what I paid for this. So that's why I went ahead and, and picked this up, and I'm happy I did. I'm glad it works. You know, when you buy used, that's very, very risky. Uh, because, you know, anything can go wrong and there's no warranty. When you buy used but uh, we lucked out here i think and i'm having a great time okay well watch this space there'll be a lot more slot car um videos i'm in no position to do any tutorials on how to maintain the uh the cars or the tracks give me some time with that eventually we'll get there um i've got some uh some oil and some uh, tools in order to work on these i'm no mechanic chappies we all know i'm mr arts and crafts rather than Mr. Build thing, build complicated machinery and furniture. Uh, but I think I can pull it off. It's not that. These are toys, after all. Uh, so let's keep that in perspective. So that's our first look at the fully functional Carrera Digital 132 Spirit of Speed. Um, I'm not going to call it a starter set because it isn't. Uh, this is a... Um, this is just a, 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 a deluxe set is what it is. It comes with three cars, eight meters of track. It's like 26, a little over 26 feet. There is a starter set for Carrera Digital 132 that's much, much less expensive than the retail price on this thing. Uh, but that set is only available in Germany. And after you uh, pay the, sh the extortionate shipping cost to get it from, into the U.S. from Europe, uh, it's a poor value. Uh, it costs more than this at retail price. Well, no, that's not true. It costs more than this at the uh, price it's going for these days. Let's 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 just go over this retail price for what you see out here. Brace yourselves, six hundred American dollars. Um, now the sticker on the box has it marked down to four hundred. That's still finger blasting expensive, in my opinion. I paid far far less for this, but again, it was secondhand, used one time on Christmas morning. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I would never pay retail price for any of this stuff. I'm going to try to find my peripherals used. I doubt I can. Otherwise, that's going to be uh, uh, purchases that that will have to wait. Uh, because when you're a hobbyist on a budget, you have to uh, plan accordingly and make smart purchases. Was this a smart purchase? Well, it appears to be so. Uh, it certainly takes up a lot of room in here, doesn't it? I'm going to have to tear this down. 
uh, Sunday night and uh, make this a workspace again Monday morning. But And that's not ideal, but that's the way it's going to have to be. So uh, uh, well pleased with this. Never had a slot car set as a kid. I'm finding some joy I've never had before with this, and I'm looking forward to uh, pushing the boundaries on what I can do with one of these things. Okay, thanks so much for watching, pals, and I'll talk to you again real soon. Take care.